Good evening and welcome to Ascension. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. All the music can be found in the bulletin. Our gathering song is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Please rise. i 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome, everyone. It is almost Christmas, Christmas right around the corner, and yet we still have a bit more Advent to, to walk through, to worship through. We have our, the blessing of the, the little uh, Jesus figurines from Manger Crutch, and so uh, we'll pray over those here uh, after, after the homily, a reminder that all of us are called to welcome Jesus into our homes this Advent season. Uh, today, the 19th of December, is uh, O um, Stump of Jesse, O Root of Jesse. And uh, we didn't sing that verse. That's okay. That's okay. O Stump of Jesse, we, uh, we remember God's promises to us uh, and to that house. Let us now call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and, and grant us your, your salvation. salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. As we seated and listen to the word of God. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. She was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her, her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. First, do a little word association. What do you think of when you hear the word promise? Word promise. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Is, is it a promise kept or a promise broken? You may have to suspend reality for a moment, forget that you're in church, and, and forget any emotion behind it, any kind of nuance in the words, and just listen to the words themselves, you promised. Does that make you feel like it's a promise kept or prom promise broken? I believe that we want to believe that most often it's promises kept. I believe in the very depth of 
my being and all that I hope for, that promises are kept. But I'm fairly sure that many of us, myself included, uh, when we think much about promises, begin to think of promises broken. I did have an opportunity to ask Samantha, uh, the, our cantor for today, and uh, she said, promises kept. And I said, well, you're not a jaded adult, so that's wonderful, just hang on to that. But for many of us, the passage of time and life has caused us to dwell on promises broken. If you believe me wrong, then hang on to that, because I want you to think primarily of promises kept. When it is promises kept, it is, though more of a lifelong thing, isn't it? More of a commitment that lasts one's entire life. Many promises made are promises that are, um, are, are meant to be final, They're meant to uh, sustain us throughout our entire lives. Those promises broken, those promises we may think of more easily, political promises, business promises, all those kind of deals that may fade and be broken, but genuine promises, the promises that we think of here, the promises we agree to right in this spot, or just a week ago, we had a wonderful couple promise their lives to one another right here in this very spot. You had your pastor promise uh, certain promises to the bishop and to uh, the, the, the staff, even though they weren't mentioned, the staff gave me a hard time about that. It got left out because of the merger. I promised to the staff. <laughs> promises are made here in this place. Promises that count on God's eternal promise. For God's promises, while we may not see them come to completion in our own lives, God fulfills his promises. That is part of this entire season of Advent. Trusting that God fulfills his promises even if they take place beyond our own lives. This promise that God is making to David in this interesting conversation between the king and Nathan the prophet, who David asks at first, should I build a wonderful temple for our God, for the Ark of the Covenant? And Nathan, probably having considered it at some point himself, says, yes, sounds like a great idea. But then that night, he receives a message from God that orders him to return to David and in fact tell him, essentially, you want to make me a promise, but I'm going to make you a promise. We have to recognize that King David was a special character, but he wasn't perfect. King David had his faults. King David had his failures. He had his sins that he needed to confess. But God saw and loved David and made these promises to him. Promises that David himself didn't see fulfilled. Promises that David and his descendants probably took differently than what God intended. That there would be an everlasting dynasty of the king of David that his descendants would rule forever. I haven't seen a king of Israel recently. If we believe that promise, then it failed. And many along the way probably did think that God forgot his promise. And yet there is so much more. A promise made, a promise kept, a promise continuing to be fulfilled in this very day, promise beyond all imagining. The reality here is, is that David desires to promise God to build him a house to live in. His son Solomon, 
completes that task. He builds the temple. And yet, God's promise to David is essentially the same. That God desires a dwelling place for himself amongst his people. Preparing the Virgin Mary from the moment of her conception to the time when she said yes of her own will, her own accord, to this promise that God has made. This fulfillment of this promise to David and those who come after him to build a dynasty that will never end. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God of all, never fails. He will never lose his throne. He was killed for us, and yet he regained and retook his seat of glory. We can count on the promises of God. Even in the midst of our difficulties today, even in the midst of the hurt still caused by promises broken in our own lives, the shame, perhaps, of having broken promises of our own. God keeps his promises. But let's not put too much around that, too much uh, thought into exactly how those promises are going to be fulfilled. Because God works in very mysterious ways. God desires to fulfill that promise even yet today to make you a dwelling place of the Most High God, to allow you to receive God himself. Let us look to those promises. Let's open our hearts, especially in these dark times, to recognize that God's promises will always be fulfilled, to count on that, to trust in that, and to rest in that. For indeed, we are about to celebrate Christmas, the fulfillment of that promise. Before we stand and pray, I'll pray over these uh, Jesus figurines, uh, blessing them, and in turn blessing the manger scenes from which they came in our homes and in our lives. Let us pray. God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you have made and manifest your love. When our need for a savior was great, you sent your son to be born of the Virgin Mary. For our lives, he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. Lord, bless all who look upon these child Jesus. May they remind us of the humble birth of your son and raise up our thoughts to him, who is God with us and Savior of all, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us now stand with one heart and one voice, proclaim our one faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of God and before all ages.
with reliance and confidence on our good and gracious God, we bring our prayers before him, crying out, Come, Lord Jesus. For Pope Francis, may the Lord bless him in his zeal and joy for the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For our elected officials, may the Holy Spirit conform their hearts to charity and justice as they make their governing decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For those who suffer the harshness of winter, may the Lord in his infinite mercy ensure they have adequate shelter and food for their tables. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For all of us at Ascension, may the grace of discernment help us fulfill God's plan for each of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For Dennis O'Daniel, for whom this Mass is being celebrated, and for all the faithful departed, may they soon come face to face with Jesus their Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For the prayers in our book of intentions, and for all those prayers which we hold within the silence of our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Loving God, hear our prayers as we strive to know your will and follow the plan you have carved out for us. For we ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and angels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sin, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom, for our sake, you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper. He himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and to drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of the faith.
celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love. We offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace of Christ, Father. Behold, 
the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. On Monday, at 7, we will have the Mass of the Longest Night, or in the Longest Night, Mass in the Longest Night. So the 21st is almost always, sometimes it's the 22nd, but the 21st is almost always the longest night of the year, uh, and so we'll have this special Mass. It's meant for especially those who are mourning or troubled or, or grieving in some way, uh, that uh, you may not be ready for the grand celebration of Christmas. Uh, so if, if you're inclined, you can come. Uh, it, won't be, it won't be down, but it'll be solemn uh, in, that, in that sense. So 7 p.m. on Monday. Sign-ups for Christmas Masses are still taking place. Please, please, please sign up. If, you, if, people, if a lot of people show up, it's going to be chaos, and I'm going to have to turn people away. And it's, it's not going to be good. Deacon John will probably start hitting people. It's going to be terrible. <laughs> no, no. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, if you're having any trouble with those signups, please let us know. But many have already signed up. Um, and so it's been going fairly well. Uh, CSA. We only have 3,000 left. So between last weekend and this weekend, uh, there was $1,000 donated. And uh, that looks like about $86 from 36 families. $86 from 36 families would complete both of our goals for this year. Uh, we would uh, certainly look forward to that. Absolutely. It's very good to be with you all, celebrate with you, uh, to prepare for the birth of the Christ child in our lives. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the, <clears throat> Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thanks.